I'll be reacting to Set This, the Roman Fighter, episode 4. I'll be watching it from Crunchyroll's episode, and I'll be starting my reaction in 1, 0, go. Alright, pumped up for this. So, as you can we're going to see the built up Edmund versus Set This Fight. I just hope if our boy does win. Which I'm assuming he will because, I mean, his name is in the title of the anime. Hope it's a convincing way of winning. Considering just the experience gaps between Setvis and his opponent. I gotta admit though, he looks manly as fuck in that scene. I mean, he may be a boy, but damn! He's got the body of a man. Kinda sounds like Karitsugo from Fate Stay Night. I mean, from the Fate Z oh yeah, from the Fate series. It's actually nice seeing him actually rump his body right before a fight. That's something that you don't get in some animes. Characters rumming up their bodies before battling. Yeah, as if, I'm at, as if Edmund needed any more motivation. It's just a shame that all this happened only because... Savas' friend is a dick! If he would have just kept his mouth shut. Savas' friend. And none of this shit would be happening right now. But no. You know what? No, the fight would have probably still happened. Because she would have still made the offer towards her boy. But still, though, regardless. I think that's what's going to get him, though. And him being filled with jealousy, he's going to lose rationality in his mind. Which I hope, because I like that, Ben. Don't get me wrong, he's cool and all. But I'm obviously going to be rooting for our boy Setvis to get through this. Like, honestly. With what he's achieved in the last few episodes, how in the hell am I not going to root for him? Cody no count. Man! Just something about the vocalist for this opening. Oh, this gets me pumped up. Man. Now. And saying that with our boy Sevis rejecting the offer. I thought that was pretty cool. I think that's something he definitely had to do because... For one... Something obtained by your, hand, your own hand is satisfying. Sometimes trying to go for the option of guaranteed self-preservation isn't the best. It might be better and like to take some risks. Even though, yes, in the short term, things may seem rougher. You know what to say. Nothing venture, nothing gain. At least that's how I perceive Setfus rejecting the offer to be... The Chamberlain for the blonde haired. I'm not even calling her by her name because she's a bitch! So I'll just call her blonde haired female dog in this instance. Because calling her by her name would be too much of a service towards her.
Ah, he's got the home field advantage. I mean, they've probably seen him um, win so many battles, though. That's probably why. Hmm. I wonder what you're doing. Oh, okay, good, good. At least we got some of the crowd cheering for our boy. Oh no, I hear some booing. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, okay, they're booing admin. Okay. You know. I know they're saying there's nothing honorable, but come on, they're not the one they're fighting in the arena. That's the thing. I know she's saying that, but... I mean, hey, that could actually help out in Set Lessa's favor. Exactly. You know, hypothetically speaking, Seven should at least have a mobility advantage. But that's only hypothetical, though. Maybe he's gonna have to try cannon punch Edmund. <laughs> oh man. I do love that inner monologue from Edmund, though, but our boy never had the option of being an actor, though. Unfortunately. He was worn to the slave life, but hopefully he can die a free man, though. And I'm not saying free man as in, like, when you die, it's freedom. I mean, hopefully he can get his freedom and live multiple years being a free man. So that y'all don't twist my words. <laughs> because things can really be taken out of context sometimes. Yeah, it's actually pretty smart. The thing is, will he be able to... It looks like he asked me... Yes! Hey, our boy ain't no punk. Well, no. I mean, it's only one punch. Edmund doesn't look like a guy... The thing is, though, I mean, it doesn't look like a guy who would be knocked down by one punch, though. Well, yeah, I mean, shit. To win as many fights as he has. Shit, he's already looking tired. I mean, at least he's showing set for some respect in now. Talk about some nice character development in the midst of a tense situation there. And that's the thing, set hasn't received the blow yet. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Eventually he's gonna run a stand -out. I'm surprised he's not even sweating yet. Which I wish the animators had those little details with some sweat. All things considered, it would make 
of the episode more immersive, there was some sweat. And I know that's because I watch a lot of the- okay, there's some sweat now in the close-up shots, but in distant shots, I was hoping there'd be at least a bit more sweat. Oh! And not just that, he's pushing Sepphis back too! Hmm. Oh. And the thing is, with Edmund's amount of victories that he's achieved, he's probably used to opponents. That are similar in size to set this. I like how tactical the fights are too. And because even though yes the animation isn't beautiful, at least you can see here that the writing and the storyboarding themselves are good because you're seeing Inner monologuing while fighting's going on. It perfectly betrays how during tense situations like this, your mind has to constantly be working at max overdrive. Showing just how amazing Emmett and Sevis are to be able to both combine thoughts and uh, methodical movements to their bodies simultaneously. I just wish again the animators were able to perfectly betray this, because the writing staff and the storyboarders are all on point. It's just a shame that the animators involved, yeah, they're less than optimal. But, regardless, cool scene. Like I said, the script is absolutely amazing. Honestly, if the animation for the series was on the level of, say, backflips, which is earning this season, this would be my anime of the season, or even Megalobox's animation quality. This would be the anime of the season for me. With zero hesitation. Oh. Jeez. I um, mean, what the amount of years that Edmund has, he's probably picked it up in a few of the people that he's fought. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me one bit. And Edmund is a man with a large amount of intelligence, too. I mean, shit, the credits be patient. At first, they were saying how you didn't seem like he was going to send a chance against Edmund. Now they're saying. Now they're trying to urge him to get back. Jeez! Yeah, when they have some of the crowds talking, I wish they would actually animate the math flaps. When it comes to, like, the Nelly's photo audience, at least for the characters with defined faces, they do at least um, have some lip syncing. I like how now Edmund's like completely lost up and satisfying some being. I like that though. Oof. Oh shit. I was hoping at the very least it would just be his hearing that's affected, but it looks like his vision's being affected too. Jeez. No, I think he's waiting for Sevis to make a move to counterattack.
Oh! He would, I mean... The thing is, though, we can't assume that his opponent is just going to stay... Oh, shit. I think Savage Street will probably at least stalled a bit more. But I can't understand his rationale in thinking that, though. Yeah, maybe he's trying to make Maybe he's trying to make Setvis lose Stanima and then land a finishing blow. Or maybe... Oh shit. He's trying to bait him! So they can land a precision like a blow when Setvis's guard is down after laying a punch. Seems like that's what Edmund's going for. Yeah, but it... A bit too late there. Oh, boy. Yeah, the next one... Oh, shit! I'm not gonna blame him. I mean, hell, if Edmund won so many fights for the sake of Sabina, then yeah, of course he would. No, but he's definitely gonna have to get back up, though. Oh shit. Oh, I wonder if his life is going to start flashing before his very eyes. And not voice, more like voices. Going by the context. Look how it's I me mean, like it's um all the nerves in his brain is just trying to activate him willing to wake up right now. I love that you're seeing just the bond between him and his teacher. That is bad. Whoa! <laughs> Talk about waking up. Yo, I didn't think the, the narrator had to explain it, but hey, fuck yeah. I mean, he sounds epic, so I'm at, I'll actually take it. Alright, finally we're gonna be making well it's gonna finally be getting through some nice plot progression now. Then we're gonna get past the events of episode one. Okay, gotta admit that is scary if that attack did all that. Ooh. Oh, that's even gonna be more damage. Huh. 
You know, realistically, someone of Seves's size would not be able to survive all those hits to the end, though. Like, three major hits, it would definitely cause a lot of damage in between the nerves of the neck area. But, in saying that, And there's like this, you know what, a little bit of times where they take it over the top and realism's out the window. On occasions, can actually make things m much more enriching, so I actually don't mind that too much. I just got a comment on that though, because it's all the bulls, I'm like, damn! I mean, shit! If a board has survived with three blows that could have potentially killed them, there's no way you should be giving up this rate. It might actually stand a chance. Well, I actually like the character development again for Admin because now he's gained at least enough respect for a set list to the point where He's making the face of it'd be a shame. He's making the face as if he's trying to tell Sevis that it'd be a shame if he died to there. So I like those little subtle nuances. Although I'm saying that, damn! I love the character development for Sevis where, despite all the odds being against him, he's still throwing out as much as he can on the ring to fight. And that is absolutely fucking cool if you ask me. So that's why if I had to rate this episode on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm definitely giving this a 9. Like, it absolutely and utterly deserves that because, for one, it made a lot of plot progression. We at least now got to the point of the beginning of the series. We get to not just see that, but we also get to see the killer techniques of Edmund at the very least. And in addition to that, I do like how it's bringing in like the whole audience factor involved. Just seeing how the crowd was against Edmund and all that. I was actually kind of funny there when they were booing him for a small bit. I was like, whoa! It makes the fight feel even more grandiose than it already is. So that's what I thought I did of things well narratively. Ah, it looks like Edmund. Oh, snap! Looks like our boy's seemingly getting the upper hand there in the preview. At least going by the outward appearances. I mean, I could be wrong on that, but. Hey, it's giving me some hope. Now, aside from that, though, something else that I also enjoyed about this episode, too. I do enjoy that they're also giving Setvis some nice epic feats. Because, considering the fact that he's running all these blows, it's nice to get to see just the reaction from the audience, too. Just seeing them solely root for Setvis. Because, considering all the feats, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to root for him in this type of context? So that's another thing I also enjoy about this episode, too. And on top of that, love all they introduced, at least for a small bit. I also can't even feel for, for him, especially when I showed you how Setvis's vision was feeling blurry from, like, feeling dizzy and all that. I was like, whoa, now that took me aback for a small bit. And that's what I thought the episode had a few advantages narratively, because... It really took advantage of the fact that it's in the animation medium pretty dang well in some bits. Even though, yes, the animation quality isn't exactly great, at the very least, it does well with what it has. And I even love how they make the fight extra tense by actually having Edmund and Setvis think about their strategies while fighting. And that's something you don't see in a lot of action animes. Sometimes they have just the characters monologue for a bit, or they just talk, and then they fight separately, and then they fight, and then they talk. I like how the series nah, combines them both. 
And that's why I gotta give respect to the craftsmanship, to a certain extent. And as for other things, and naturally I thought the voice performances were great. And the music was pretty darn good too, and that's why I have to rate it a 9 out of 10. I think the episode at least absolutely deserves it in my opinion. But anyways y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you feel about my reaction or the episode itself in the comments section below. Hope y'all share the video, comment, or subscribe. And I'll see y'all later if you come back for more because I'm definitely going to be erect into the next episode. But anyways y'all, thank y'all so much for watching my video now. That's it everyone. Bye bye.